Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of GSU ENI Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. Today on the show, we have Yazdan Navabi with Food Upcycles. Welcome. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back on Business Radio X. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to get updated about Food Upcycles. Uh, what's been going on over there? Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of discussions, a lot of talking, a lot of phone calls, a lot of visits. Um, I was I was really hoping last time I was on the show that I I could have paying customers next time. Um, that's not the case. We're still pre revenue, but um, we got very close to launching a pilot this summer. We got uh, we got a lot of traction with Publix, um, grocery stores, but that kind of fell through just because of our size and our volume capacity. Um, but, um, that's kind of like the biggest news of the summer, really. That was, that was really big. Um, however, even though we didn't move forward with that, they're still very interested in, um, the way I understood it, as soon as we can handle more volume, um, they're, they're going to be there with, to work with us. Now, just to, um, remind folks, tell us about food upcycles in terms of, uh, what the concept is and how you're serving folks. Yes, so we are a food waste um, collection service. Uh, we're subscription based, but we also offer per request pickups. And so basically, just to give you a gist, um, instead of sending organic uh, food waste to landfills, instead of just throwing it away, we, wanna, we want people to have a separate bin where you can put all your organic trash separate from you know plastics and papers and whatnot. So some so folks what? have like composting. Is this kind of taking the place of composting? Yes. Well, this is composting. Yes. But like I'm doing it instead of like I have a bin for aluminum and and things like that. And I would have a bin for the stuff I would compost if I don't want to put up, you know, set up my own composting thing in my backyard. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so we come um, and we pick up the bin. We swap it out with, with a clean one. That's kind of like the industry standard. Then we take it to our site. Uh, we let nature do its thing. We let the, the waste turn to compost. And then we supply it to farmers. Um, and then that completes the cycle. And then, and that's the upcycles that you're talking about in the name, right? Yeah. Uh, most people actually don't know what that is. It's a fairly new word. Um, and everyone knows what recycling is. You know, recycling is trying to minimize the waste when you're um, disposing of something or, or trying to use part of it. But when you're talking about upcycling, you're actually turning that thing into something of higher value, you know? So something that's kind of like easier for people to understand is imagine you have a bunch of driftwood just floating in the lake, and then you turn that to like a very expensive high-end table, for instance, that would be upcycling. Um, and that's essentially what we're doing with trash. We're upcycling trash into, you know, beautiful, nutritious soil that farmers can use. And then that's an important part of this, right? So people may not understand when they're just kind of throwing stuff down the garbage disposal. Uh, that's like kind of gold in, in, for some people. All of that material could be yeah. um, put into soil and the soil becomes that much more rich and nutritious. And it's it's val valuable to somebody, right? Absolutely. Actually, I'm, I'm very happy you said that. Some people, not many, but some people call compost black gold because it is so valuable. Um, a fun fact, to get the same amount of vitamin A from one orange that your grandparents used to get, you would have to eat eight oranges while they would just have to eat one orange. You know, and that's how devoid our, our food is of nutrients. Um, farmers are, are forced to use synthetic inputs, synthetic fertilizers, things like that, and it does make the fruits grow, but it's not even comparable to, to you know, what it should be. And this is one of those uh, businesses that if you, if everybody was just kind of accepted this like we do now of having bins for recycling and just have bins for this composting and have an efficient system to take this away and then repurpose it and upcycle it, 
this would benefit lots of folks. This is something that um, could really make a difference, and it and it wouldn't take like we don't need a hundred percent compliance in order to make this go. If you just had a, a good amount of, I would imagine, kind of restaurants, businesses, like grocery stores, like that, to do this, um, and eventually, I'm sure the consumer, this could make a, a big difference in the how much more nutrition we would be getting in our foods. Correct. Correct. And um, the, the, you know, the nutrition part, having more nutrition in our food that would take uh, slightly longer, but the immediate effect and um, our, our forefront problem that we're trying to tackle is actually all the gases, the global warming gases that are released um, from these food wastes when they're in landfills. Um, and it, it kind of gets really scientific and really nerdy. And I try not to get too much into it because I get really caught up. But basically, when you put food in uh, any type of organic waste in a landfill, because it's so pressed down, it doesn't get oxygen and, and proper uh, water, it rots anaerobically. It rots in the worst way possible, and it creates um, a lot of methane and a lot of carbon dioxide. And pound for pound, if you were to take, let's say, you know, 1,000 pounds of waste and put it in a landfill or compost it, Composting it would produce 90% less greenhouse gases. And that's just an insane amount because landfills, it's, they're like the fourth or fifth global contributor to global warming. Um, and some figures will even claim it's, it's almost third. So by composting this, you know, we can reduce these gases by 90%. And you're going to create a, an upcycle product that's super valuable and beneficial. So this is like a total win-win-win all the way around. Like exactly. they're, they're, exactly. they're, it's just taking up space and it's negatively impacting the space it's taking. This is something that seems so obvious and simple. It's just a matter of, you know, kind of getting the escape velocity you need to get this thing up and running. Now, what businesses, like you, you mentioned a grocery store, what types of businesses should be kind of um, at least experimenting with this and working with you? Yeah, so our company, our, our, main ish, our main target, our main mission is helping the environment and, you know, cutting back these, these uh, global warming gases and also doing more positive things in the long run. And so we're focused on volume. We want big volume. So we're not trying to service, you know, households and things like that, you know, one pound here, two pounds there. We're trying to go to the source, you know, we're going to be driving trucks and, and using fossil fuels for sure. So we want to make sure that those trucks you know, are, are having the most positive impact they can. And we're going to be doing that by, by targeting, uh, targeting grocery retailers and large, um, large volumes. And once we're able to scale more, then we want to go after apartment buildings, you know, large, large volumes. That's what we're focused on. I'm not sure if that answered your question. Yeah. So that's your first uh, target are kind of the, the bigger, bigger players here because you can get more bang for your buck in terms of impact. Right. But see, now the challenge is we're like a small company and we're trying to go after these volumes. So we kind of broke things down into three phases. Phase one or stage one, um, we're going to be servicing vegan restaurants and juice bars just because that's a lot lower cost for us. It's easier and it's just a lot more streamlined. And then as soon as we can get some more funding and move to a bigger space uh, and we can handle larger volume capacities, instantly we're going to be jumping into retailers, big stores. And then a few years down the road, then we'll, we'll progress to apartment buildings. And then uh, talk about the Main Street Entrepreneurship Seed Fund. How did that, uh, how did you get involved with that? Yeah, I was, I was, um, that was the culmination of a lot of hard work, but also, you know, just a lot of luck and a lot of um, uh, just a blessing. You know, sometimes things happen and um, I was actually, you know, I've been working on this startup for over two years and I was at a point where I felt like, I didn't have, um, there, were, there weren't new things coming into the mix. And it was just kind of like the same thing. And even though I was talk, trying to talk to new people and, and trying to do different things, nothing new was happening. And then, um, you know, it had been a few months. And then I heard back from Main Street. I, I kind of almost forgot about it. I was like, you know, I didn't get it. But I just kept following up every now and then. But I, it felt like I wasn't in. And then I just heard back. And I was like, you've been selected. And it's kind of hard to believe. And then uh, explain what you got and how you're kind of using the resources that they provide. Basically, it comes down to two things. Uh, you get some funding and you get some resources. And they set us up with, um, with a mentor 
So we have like one main mentor, but but honestly, um, people from the ENI Institute are so helpful. They're so they're they're really like a family. They're so so caring. And so even though we we get assigned to one mentor, um, we really kind of get to tap into the entire institute. All you have to do is reach out and ask for help, and they'll be there, and they'll answer your emails late night. I mean, it's been it's been a lot of support, and we do get some funding too, and and um. We do get support for, for our presentations or, you know, let's say I have a meeting with a potential customer and, and I have some, some doubts going into it. You know, I could just reach out and be like, hey, do you think I should say this or do you think I should say that for support? Yeah. So that type of um, kind of business intelligence really can prevent you from making a mistake and really help you accelerate your growth and maybe open some doors for some folks that could become your customer. Yeah, one, one big thing I struggled with because my my uh, startup just kind of entails so many different parts and different players. You know, we have farmers, restaurants, big businesses. Um, I had a huge problem with with just like um, trimming down and consolidating my information. And I am kind of wearing all the hats here. So I'm the R&D guy, I'm the CEO guy, I'm the marketing guy. And, and sometimes in the beginning when I would present, I would just have so much information and for an outsider who doesn't really know about compost, it's it's all just mumbo jumbo. And um, they've they've really helped me to be more selective with the present with the information I'm presenting and, and kind of like what to leave in, what to leave out. Well, congratulations on all the success. I mean, it's it feels like you're on the brink of something really important and and really um, kind of worthwhile, a mission worth going on. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to start our pilot, you know, this fall for sure. There's, we, we're talking with different restaurants and um, hopefully we can get that launched soon. We just need more funding and we need more partnerships. So anyone listening, please spread the word. <laughs> and if somebody wants to learn more about uh, the uh, business, what is, is there a website? Is there a way to connect with you or somebody on your team? Yes, um, because, you know, we are a new startup and we're strapped for cash. Our website is not live yet. But um, all our web- social media handles are food upcycles, and it's it's spelled just how it sounds. And our website, once it's live, will be foodupcycles.org. And then, but, um, and then, is there a way? Like, which one is the best one to connect with you? Is it LinkedIn? Is it? Um, I would say Instagram. Instagram. Instagram yes. Okay, so if they go on Instagram and look that look up food upcycles. They'll be able to find you and then connect with you and then hopefully uh, do some good for folks. Yes, and learn about composting. We we try to like make a blend of uh, educational and entertainment on our Instagram because I know compost is not the sexiest thing out there, so we try to make it fun. Well, it's important. I'll tell you that. And Very, it, and it's yes. it's one of those things where it's valuable and it's sitting right in front of all of us. And if we would just pay a little bit of attention and if there's a way to make it as easy as possible i'm sure more people will do this just like we sort stuff out every day i mean in organizations that are dealing with this there's no need to be throwing all this away there's a better way to deal with all this waste and i think that you have you know come up with a way that makes a lot of sense for a lot of people yeah and i think most people are, are open to it it's just another thing to do you know, right, so it, it just takes a person or a company to kind of like make set it, things up, make it easy, and then they'll yep. do it. If it if it kind of can work seamlessly into their workflow, they're going to do it. Without it'll be no, a no brainer because it's the right thing to do. It's the it, if you can make it easy, they'll they'll do this for sure. I believe that. Yeah, me too. Well, congratulations again, and thank you so much for sharing your story. You're doing important work, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Lee. Thanks for having me again. You got it. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on GSU ENI Radio.